Hi, in this video I want to show you how you might use the indexing API in production. In real-world applications, you do not want to directly connect to a database, but provide a layer around it. This layer is normally an API that allows specific operations with a database. There are three main reasons why you might do this. The first one is security. Direct connections can expose sensitive data and systems to potential security vulnerabilities and attacks. Using an API as an intermediary layer helps in implementing security measures such as authentication and authorization to protect data access. Scalability and maintenance. Direct connections from clients and applications can lead to scalability issues. An API serves as an abstraction layer that can manage connections efficiently and it is easier to maintain and update without affecting the client-side applications. Validation. APIs can systematically apply structured validation rules to incoming data and thereby prevent invalid or malformed data from entering the database, which may not be enforced with direct connections. Now let's have a look how this is done in code. And as always, you will find the link to the repository in the description. Okay, I'm here in VS Code and as you can see on the left, there are multiple folders. AI service FAQ and Postgres. AI service contains the fast API REST application. FAQ contains the uh, data, which we will insert in the vector database. And Postgres is the vector database, also contains the record manager. So we use one database for the record manager um, with the indexing API and also this uh, PG vector as vector database. So we only need to host a single database for this. So in case you don't know, the LangChain indexing API is new to LangChain and provides a method to, to surgically update a vector database. So instead of dumping the whole database and creating a new one, when some content changes, you only update, for example, one row in a CSV, then you only update a single embedding and not dump the whole database. I also did a video on the indexing API, which you might want to watch before or after this video. But okay, let's start with the Docker Compose YAML file. As you can see, we use Docker Compose as our orchestrator for our applications. We've got two applications. The first one is in Postgres folder. The second one is in the iService folder. So this is the REST API, and this is Postgres with the PG Vector extension. So we use that to start the application. And now let's have a look at the AI service in detail. So let's have a look at the AI service folder and inside the app.py, we first have to import some packages and functions and classes from LangChain and also from FastAPI. So we use the Retrieval Q&A chain, we use OpenAI embeddings, PJ vector, and so on. These are just imports. And then we load the OpenAI API key and set it here as property. And after that, we will create the connection string for PG vector, which will serve as our vector store and also for the record manager as um, base database. Okay, after that, we will create the record manager with the SQL record manager class, provide the namespace and also the connection string. Then we run the create schema method to create the table in the database. Okay, now we can set the logging and we just define a logger here and set the log level to info. So this is just for the API. And after that, we will define two classes, which are classes to validate the data which we want to put in our database. So this is a document request class. This inherits from the Pydentic base model and we set the page content to a string and the metadata to dict. So this follows the normal LangChain document class, but, but we have to do it with Pydentic because we want to use that in the API endpoint. We also create an enum, the cleanup method enum and allow setting the cleanup method to incremental or full. After that, we will create all of the OpenAI stuff. So we'll create an instance of the OpenAI embeddings class. We create an LLM with the chat OpenAI class and also create a vector store with PG vector. We provide the collection name and the connection string, also the embeddings function, which we defined here. Then we create a prompt for the LLM with context. This is for the extracted documents of the database and the question which comes from the user and create a real prompt template with a prompt template class. Then we pass all that prompt stuff in chain type quarks to the retrieval Q&A class, which allows us to retrieve documents. So we set this to the Q&A variable and we will now use the run method of this instance here inside the API. So now let's create the API. So we instantiate fast API. 
After that, we will use the course middleware and now we will create our first endpoint. The first endpoint is the indexing endpoint. And as you can see, we provide docs. So this is in a docs request variable and this is a list of document requests. So this follows this format here. So we need a document with page content and metadata. And we also want to provide that cleanup method and the default is incremental. Okay, so after passing this docs request to the endpoint, we want to create some um, new classes and this is the actual document class from Langchain and not our re um, document request class. So now we have got a list of documents and we pass that list of documents to the index function from Langchain. So we need the documents here. We also need the record manager and the vector store. And we set the cleanup method to the value of the enum, which we get here from the API endpoint. The index method here returns, as you can see at the end, so at the very end here, a dictionary with num added. And here we can see how many documents were added, how many documents were updated, skipped or deleted. So we want to return that dictionary here in the endpoint to the user. So we can see how many documents were updated, added and so on. Okay, now we create our second endpoint and the second endpoint actually just makes use of the question. We pass that to the run method of the retrieval q &A chain, get a result from OpenAI and pass the result back to the user here as dictionary. So that's the API. I think it's time to run it and we can just run the application with docker compose up minus minus build and then let's just wait a little bit. So here is the Swagger UI of our application. As you can see, we've got two post endpoints, index and question. And I provided a little script insert data, which makes use of this FAQ folder. So we use the directory loader and load all of the text files here. Then we run a character text splitter. After splitting the documents, we will now convert that documents into a dictionary and now make a post request to localhost port 8000 and make it to the indexing API. And here we provide a parameter with that question mark and set cleanup to full. So now we can pass in all of our data, which is docs data, this is the dictionary version of the data. And we can open a second terminal and just run Python and then insert data.py. So this will now make a request to our API endpoint and the API will handle the data and put it in the database. As we can see, we added 40 documents in our uh, vector store. And if you run it again, then we can see 40 documents were skipped. So we don't add them again or create any duplicates. And now let's just update a little bit here. So let's just remove that question here from our restaurant and then run that again. And if we do that, then we can see that now three documents were deleted. So as we can see that works and this is the way I would approach the indexing API in production. So if you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. See you, bye bye.